good morning everybody so welcome to the fourth webinar in the series of nos plan talks my name is ankita rai and i am a member of the public relations cell of nos plan and nos plan as you all know is a student body organization and currently we are having our uh, annual nos plan 23rd annual nos plan convention going on so it started from the 1st of april and uh, today is the last day of our convention and uh, nos plan talks presents its fourth webinar titled project management in t20 format by mr satish parak sir promoter and managing director of ashoka beltcon limited a leading highway developer in the country mr satish parak is a promoter and managing director of ashoka beltcon limited one of the leading highway developers in the country mr parak's association with ashoka group began in 1982 under his leadership the company entered into the national level infrastructure development space specializing in highways bridges and power uh, tnd and railway sector the company's profile is the company's profile is adorned with several prestigious highway and bridge uh, projects including india's first eight lane extra dose cable state, state bridge uh, mr Pr mr satish parak has been honored and felicitated by various forums which includes his recognition of industry doyen and infrastructure person of the year mr parak is active in social and trade association and has significantly contributed to organizations such as national highway builders federation institution of engineers india jain international trade organizations confederations of indian industries federation of indian chambers of commerce and industries etc he has been recently appointed as the president of the irf india chapter so we are happy to have you here with uh, we are happy to have you sir so uh, over to you sir we can start thank you ankita i am really i really feel honored and privileged to be part of this gathering 23rd annual nos plan convention it's a great logo you have given samatolna balance i really appreciate and at this juncture i would also like to thank bage sakla for you know calling upon me and giving me this opportunity to interact with you students i'll start with a presentation given in jito x jito x is a platform like tedx we have at our jain international trade organization so we'll share a short film on this which gives you how t20 format has really inspired us and how we have achieved so many records by using this format in project management so i'll take you through this entire presentation and then we'll have some q and a okay ankita okay sir inspired by books and some are inspired by movies at ashoka we are inspired by t20 stretching the limits perpetually at the rate of t20 
what makes T20 so special? How does it inspire us? First is the speed. It's so fast. See, if you, you were seeing all, all this time, you know, five days. Yes, sir. If you put a fast forward button to it, it will become 50-50. If you again press the fast forward, it becomes 20-20. And today we are into the era of speed, pace. And this brings complete suspense. There is a thrill. With every over you find a new thing. For every participant there is a experience of adventure. There is an engagement of each and everybody. Whether you are a participant, whether you are a weaver, or whether you are a umpire, or whether you are actually playing, whether you are a captain or a fielder, there is an engagement of each and everybody. See the character of E20. Strategy. Every over, you need a new strategy. <coughs> Every ball can change the fate of the game. So then changing the target, putting strategy in place, it's such an inspiring And best of it is The whole electrifying environment which is created. This electrifying environment makes the whole journey enjoyable. So how exactly at Ashoka we adopt this culture? Culture of stretching the limits. And this culture is what is we are going to decode today. <laughs> See, the first thing starts when we get a project, the first thing which starts with setting the targets. So suppose we are getting a project of 30 months. Then our project director is called and asked, how can we reduce these timelines? What is the target we can set for ourselves? And then 
it's a very kind of a negotiating situation when we really set a target of 21 months again 30 months and for making this to understand we really need to show him what exactly it means to the company what it means to him what it means to the team below what it means to the customer if a project a highway project of 30 months if you do in 20 months how each one is benefited and once this concept is bought by he goes to the field he goes to the project site and he declares it as a battlefield he tells his team okay, we have a project to be completed in to a project completed in no he tells his team you have to complete in 18 months he has to be more aggressive if he really wants to achieve 21 he has to tell his team 18 and the entire team then tries to see how it can be done they work backwards they find out solutions that's a dual die situation it's attack from the first ball itself like you know when 2020 if somebody enters there set up a mind ki 250 plus karna hai similarly the team here is 18 months mein pura karna hai and then everything is worked backwards everybody has a picture given that they are going to create history they are going to break records they are going to create new benchmark for the industry and that is how the team complete mind conditioning is done once that is done then it becomes very easy to really chase the targets. So here my team is setting the, their own targets and fighting against it. So that is the real battle against all the odds in the world. Doing a project in India is very very different from doing it abroad. All multinationals have come to India. China came, did one project, went away. Korean came, failed completely. Malaysians, completely thrown out. Because conditions here are completely, it's a complete disorganized sector. Those who are in the industry, they know the challenges at site. And all this we have to address and still do the project in 18 months. Now, and while creating all this pressure, he has to ensure that everybody enjoys the process. The journey is made enjoyable. The challenge is there for the captain to see that still everybody should feel that they are really contributing to the nation. And that feeling, that rapid and exciting environment which is created, that electrifying environment which is created really creates the thrill of the project site and success of achieving you know they, they put up short term goals and once you achieve those success your team is completely motivated to achieve more so complete your put it to an achievement motivation cycle and there is no time to regret there is no time to mourn you have to reset yourself like you see in the game every work is done there is a reset of the team captain is all the time changing the fields. He has to chase against the rules. He has to fight against the other team. And that really makes a great working environment. No individual is less or important in such a, such a situation. It is not only that site or project can do anything. The responsibility is equally at the head office. So there is a complete level playing field. Everybody is put on a flat platform. The all hierarchy, all walls, all silos are broken. And it's seen that a format is created like T20 where, you know, where each and every cross-functional team is put to place. Whether it's design, whether it's finance, whether it is plant and machinery. So all those support teams, all these side team, all these side officers, everybody has to be brought on one platform. And how do we do this? What exactly the changes we do? We have been following. We have been following, you know, Primavera. We have been doing 
MS projects. There has been micro planning. There are systems, there are processes, everything is there. But still you have to keep everybody focused on the goal. So as you know, we have learned a lot from this T20. Once you see the scoreboard of T20, everybody, whether you play cricket or don't play, you understand the position of the team. It's so simple. There is an asking rate. It, it, it says everything about the what going on the match. How many wickets have gone? So very simple process. If pan wala bhi beta hai, to usko bhi samajhta hai. Or captain of the team hai, usko bhi wahi samajhta hai. Signal goes to everybody. Everybody is involved. <coughs> it's complete power pack. So what we do at sight? We break down all our major activities, dependable activities. Like if you take my first activity of EW means earthwork. So if I want to do in a month, say 37,500 cubic meters per day, is my asking rate for a particular month. Against that, we actually make all the team members see we use WhatsApp for that. This is a live photograph of my WhatsApp. Where they see if against 37,500, 63,000 is done. That means we are tired. My asking load goes down. So we don't put them in comfort zone. We say you can crash for the timelines. You have a, you are in a better position. Don't sleep over it. And catch it. Do at the rate of 68,000 so that you come at 28,000 casting rate. So certain items go in green, but certain items have some constraints. I told you there are a huge number of constraints at sight. You are playing against so many odds. <coughs> there is a client, there is a team leader, there is an inspection agency, there are n number of constraints. There are politicians who will come and stop your work. There's a strike which can go on. So your numbers can go into red. And you have to see that the entire team has to now strategize, re-strategize, work backwards, find out new solutions, take help, ask help, and again bring those red into green. And it's not only that your site is a battlefield. Your office also is like a war room. And unless you create that environment, unless you create that engagement, unless people cooperate, help, things cannot happen at sight. And this is what T20 teaches us. We see strategic timeout. What this team does exactly? They are strategizing how still we can win the match. How we can make the difference. How that number can be achieved. How you can really win the battle. And what we do at head office, all these red numbers, we try to see how we can convert into green by using whatever expertise, whatever resource we can arrange so that this target which is set by the team is achieved. Not even achieved, but you can do before the deadline is the mindset. And once you achieve this, the results are fantastic. The results are fantastic. I'll tell you, we have done a bridge. The time limit was 12 months, 360 days. And the site was really very simple. 90 meters, 300 feet, 6 spans, 15 meters each. Our team, our chairman decided we want to do a world record. This is really a great opportunity. Find out what the world record is of doing a bridge. We did a lot of research. We could not get any records. <coughs> okay, we told our team what can be the minimum time of doing a project like this. They finalized 45 days. 45 days was finalized. But let me tell you, it was achieved in 38 days. And the captain was just 28 year old guy. Wow. First 
first time in his life he had done a bridge. But once the conditioning of mind is done, once there is entire support, when the whole team is working towards one goal, it is achievable and we have done it. And we have not done it once. We did, we took a very challenging project on Rupnara and bridge. We did a highway from Calcutta to Karakpur, 112 kilometers. 30 months was the time limit. There were very less bidders. Because it has a, it had a very critical bridge on the river Rup Narayan. A bridge was left half done for almost 10 years. So we had a four-lane road on both sides, and the only bridge was the bottleneck of two lane. And there was huge traffic from Haldia port going towards Calcutta and from Calcutta to Haldia port. And there used to be huge suffering, like 500 vehicles on both sides, standing every day. Huge waste of money, huge waste of time, huge waste of energy. When we took this project, our team was again given a target of 18 months against 30 months. And this 18 months target, you have the captain here who did this bridge. Against 18 months, it was planned completely. Best of the mechanisms were put in place. And it was not only doing one half left bridge, but along with that we had to do one parallel bridge. And the length of this time was 1.1 kilometers. Each span was 54 meters. <coughs> so this was a really challenging. Ashoka had not done this earlier. The team was completely new. But we hired expertise outside, we hired consultants from outside India, we tried to find out how we can really do in 18 months. Things were worked out. For half done bridge, it was very challenging to really crack the design and put a new design in place, put new foundations in place. So where already somebody has failed, we had to do new experiments. And I am telling you, it was even astonishing for us. When we visited site along with our chairman and he saw that we are ahead of schedule. We are really going to complete before 18 months. The man says, why can't you now plan for 12 months? <laughs> and I am telling you, <coughs> extraordinary efforts were made to find out how it can be done. Provoke innovation. And that provocation, I am telling you, first time in the country, we could find a way to launch girders from both sides. It entailed huge cost. 18 crores jada lag rahe But then the picture came out, if we do in one year, you are going to save 18 months. And if you calculate that in terms of toll rise, which we were supposed to get, it was 80 crores. Wow. So, 80 crores ka sapna dikhaya gaya. Jab uska purpose dikhaya gaya ki people are suffering on both ends. And believe me, we completed in 12 months and we saved 80 crores for the government. And people are so energetic. And the person here is Rajendra who did it. Good. Stand up. He did that. He had not done this before. He did it. Why this is happening? Because the whole environment, conditioning, stretching your limits and stretching its perpetuity. Recently, I'll tell you, we completed Eastern Peripheral Expressway. Everybody might have read in newspapers. 480 days, we completed the project against 910 days. Now, all this is possible only when government wants it. This is possible only when Supreme Court wanted that Delhi should be decongested. So all efforts were made. And 480 days against the target of 500 days, which was given by government. The contract said 910 days, and it was inaugurated on 500 day because there were six packages. Others completed in 500, we completed 480 days. My package started 90 days late because of Gautam Budnagar. We had 15 days complete closure on site because we were not allowed to work because their 
settlement was not done on their land acquisition prices. But solutions, if decided, they are found. Here we had a railway over bridge. Another record which is in the history of today in the country. A railway over bridge normally take 18 to 24 months. Which was completed by our team because this was handed over to us almost on the 300 day we, have, we were left only with 180 days to complete. We found the mechanism, we found the agencies, we <coughs> put the full effort and we could complete this in 100 working days. 100 working days, why I am saying? Because after starting this bridge, there was a 50 days closure. So <laughs> there was complete demobilization, complete disruption at site. But still our team could do it. What it has given to me? From trainee engineer to MD. What my team gets? X to multi X. Thank you, Jito X. Thank you. Yeah, once again, a very good morning to all of you. So this is how, you know, we at Ashoka are inspired by T20 format. And we have huge learnings from this format, which I just now, you know, in the presentation was shared with you. Now I'll share you, this was three years back. Now I'll give you further records which we did in last three years. Yeah, so this is the project at Bundelkhand Expressway. Everybody knows UP has having largest number of expressways. And this is one project, one package on Bundelkhand Expressway out of six package, which was completed ahead of schedule before the elections of UP last month. Here we did a record by laying maximum bituminous work. And again, our own record was broken by us by further putting a next benchmark in industry of laying bituminous macadam maximum continuous in 61 hours on the same expressway we did a maximum structural decking that could be done in 45 days a huge amount of concrete and staging and shuttering was done all this was done because we were having target to complete and open up the entire expressway before the timelines the overall timelines were three years and we have completed this in 24 months. The authority had the will to do it. Our team had the ability to do it. And our organization is inspired by our past records. And therefore, we were the only company who could complete the main carriageway of Bundelkhand Expressway Package 3 in all respects. So these are the recent records which I have explained. One of the best thing which has happened to us is completing a bridge on Vadodara Mumbai Expressway. This eight lane dream project of our Honorable Prime Minister and Honorable Minister of Roads. We are doing the most difficult package of this. That is a bridge across Narmada, 2.1 kilometer, eight lane cable state extra dose bridge. Now this bridge normally anywhere in the country earlier had been done not less than 42 months. Our team has completed this in just 33 months. And that was despite of two COVID waves, despite of two major floods, which did not happen in last 30 years. So in spite of all these challenges, our team could overcome and we are the only company into entire Mumbai Delhi 
who has received pre-COD for this project. So this is the strength of the team and all this inspiration, all this learnings we get from this format of T20. The similar kind of thrill, environment, engagement and challenge and that brings entire potential from each and every member in the team. So it is basically, you know, it's it's not only execution, but I'll tell you, planning is 200% important than execution. So a lot of time goes in planning. Now we are about to be shortlisted for a very big project in the country, which is 5,000 crores, again, an expressway to be done in record time. As again, 36 months, we are planning to do in 24 months. Just yesterday, we had a brainstorming meeting where a team was selected and now they'll be working for three months to really strategize, bring about, get in the technology, get in the people, get in the methodology by which we can complete an entire expressway of 156 kilometers in 24 months. So that is Ashoka. That is what I wanted to share with you. I hope you have taken the, all the takeaways. And now I would request the organizers to open it for Q&A. Ankita? I yeah. hope I am visible. Yeah. Yes. So I just wanted to say thank you so much, sir. That was really very interesting. And we have, we already have a few questions to ask. So can I begin with questions? Sure. Okay. So, so the very first question that we have is, was there any specific project after which you developed this concept of T T20 like project management, or this is just evolved over time? Yeah, this is basically, you know, DNA of the company is doing projects ahead of schedule. So definitely even before 2020, we were doing it. But after watching 2020, after looking at the dashboard of T20, after understanding how everybody can be focused to the goal, how everybody can understand the entire position, that was the real learning when one of the IPLs I attended, myself participated. And there I felt that this is really electrifying environment, which brings about best of every player. And that's how we thought, why we cannot adopt this into our culture. And then we moved to this asking rate philosophy. Then we moved to this engagement. Then why electrifying environment cannot be created at project sites? Why war rooms cannot be created at head office? And that's how really we came into this. And now really we are completely improving on this. Now, earlier we used to use only WhatsApp. Now, Google Sheets are used where every day's progress is completely online available to every stakeholder. So that, you know, all right from stores to purchase to HR to every stakeholder, whether it is a person serving a tea or it is an MD who is deciding strategic decisions everybody knows what exactly is the position of the project and this is complete learning from our t20 experience okay so that was really good to know sir so moving on to the next question so in today's world where we talk about sustainability and climate change how you see the construction industry meeting the carbon neutrality goals yeah, very good question. Actually, there is not much awareness in at least highway construction and power t and railways where we are working. But let me share with you all of you. Mine is the first company who is environment, health and safety certified. Integrated certification ISO 18000. And this is we are holding last 10 years. So we are very conscious. We do calculate carbon footprints, we are conscious about green and a lot of first to my company. Like, you know, instead of using natural earth, we had been using 
pond ash, which is a waste from a power generation plants. So a lot of, or you can say recycling and milling was brought to this country only by Ashoka Biltcon, where we have been reusing the material, or you can say the top surfaces are called bituminous concrete, which is actually milled and reused, whereby saving natural resources. So these are a lot of things we are bringing to the table. And as a international road safety federation chairman, I am now advocating with governments to get these practices and also recognize all the contractors on the concessioners and the developers who use these practices. Very recently, NHI made it compulsory to use Pondash. Even milling is now become a practice and it is a part of IRC. So all these things are happening slowly, but definitely the awareness, which is otherwise in the balanced part of the world is not there in the construction industry in India, which slowly is now picking up. We are trying to push it. And definitely with new generation like yours coming in, we'll see a sea change in coming years. All right, so that was really nice. So moving on to the next question. So as students, uh, how can one pursue a career in project management and why exactly is it needed to be proficient in project management? All right. See what? Project management is the hard implementation is the key. See, one is designing, then there's a planning, then there's a strategy. But management is what finally helps you to implement a project. And you have to implement in a controlled environment where quality, safety, standards, environment, everything has to be taken care. So project management is key to actual delivery. Whether it is managing a design team, whether it is managing a planning team, or whether it is managing an execution team, management plays a huge role in life of every person. Whether you are a housewife or whether you are an MD of a big company, it is all management. Sometimes it is done understanding the theory, sometimes it is done with the experience, and sometimes it is done by inspiration. So it's, it's definitely very important. All right, sir. So I completely agree. Actually, we all completely agree with you that management is really very important. And you all have been our inspiration for that. So we can move to the next question. We have seen many infrastructure financing models developed in India. So according to you, which one brought a breakthrough in the market and transformed the landscape of the country? All right. So let me share here also PPP projects in 1996 was the year when first time they were conceived by our now Honorable Minister Nitin Gadkari. Then he used to be Minister for State for Maharashtra. And he was a person who really brought this model of PPP in India, which was, you know, BOT, build, operate and then transfer. Operate means collection all your revenues were to be collected by toll by the operator. And mine was the first company for picking up a small project of five kilometers for Dulia bypass in 1996. So we are, you can say founding members of this development history of India. Then came an era when he became a national Highway Minister at this uh, Cabinet Minister at the Center, and he wanted to innovate new models. And the latest model, which is really working for the country, is hybrid annuity model. The hybrid annuity means you complete a project, and during your construction phase, you will get 40% of the money of the project cost, and 60% you will get in 15 years, six monthly installments. So they have taken away risk from the developer of estimating toll or collecting toll. This risk has been taken by the government now. Since the risk sharing balance has happened, 
more and more participants have now coming into to become a developer. This has really helped to scale up. And therefore, two kilometers per day has now gone to 40 kilometers a day. So this is the model which really is now very popular and helping everybody to become a developer where risk of toll collection is taken by the government. What government does with that? Once the highway is completed, they auction the toll. And tolling risk is then passed on to somebody who has expertise in collection management and estimation. And now whatever highways have been completed on pure EPC basis by government, they are also putting on a TOT model, toll operate and transfer. So they are selling future toll rights to a developer who can upfront pay to the government now. So with that money, government can build new highways and this developer get a concession of 25 years, 30 years. So we are getting internationally the bigger funds to participate by which we are getting cost of interest has gone down. So, you know, the whole cycle is you're getting Expertise, those who have idle money is being put to infrastructure. Those who have capability to build are given the expert are given the responsibility to build the highways and maintain the highways. So this is how all you can say all expertise has now come in and we have come to a very matured model, which is hybrid annuity and TOT. Okay, so in continuation to the previous question, uh, what public policy intervention you think is the most required in the current scenario for the infrastructure development sector? See, policy-wise, government has been extremely active and interactive with the industry. And there is a continuous involvement of policy. What we are looking at government to again bring in some tax benefits, give more clarity to the entire taxation system. Because when VAT was changed to GST, we had a lot of confusion for the industry. Even today, some of the uh, clarities are required. So, you know, very simple tax clarity on the subject is very much required. Very clear uh, sharing of risk is very much required. And if there is a risk due to pandemic or any other force major which are unforeseen by the concessioners or contractors, they have to resolve this in time. I would say I really appreciate the efforts of government here. They have always come forward. They have given relaxations and they have helped and therefore the industry is booming. But we expect more swift actions and we expect this interaction will definitely, you know, bring solutions to a lot of problems. Okay, thank you, sir. So moving on to the next question. So the question says that can this T20 format also be implemented in the urban planning sector and what implications it can have overall? I think this can be implemented in any execution strategy. Anywhere you have to implement something. It is, it is basically a VR today in an environment where we need everything yesterday. So if you are really looking at some very, it is, it is not that, you know, we can always have, you know, 11 Virat Kohli's in a team. It is a balanced team. It is a complete team. It is the synergic effect, which actually brings in delivery to the desired level right from speed, quality and safety. All these three aspects can be achieved even in a format where you are going to do it at a record time. And this we have seen not only nationally, but internationally also. So you bring in technology, you bring in. So a good amount of planning is done and best of things are brought on the table on paper. Then execution by creating an environment like T20 can definitely give results and it can give in any field, whether it is railways, urban plan, urban execution or metros or it is highways or power TND or generation plants or any project. It is basically creating a very 
powerful positive environment. All right. So basically, we can use this concept almost everywhere because management is something which is required in all the fields, right? So moving on to the last question, I think this is the last question that we have. Uh, how important is the role of the road construction industry to ensure road safety in India, where we know that there are higher highest number of road accident accident deaths in India? Yes. I have taken this uh, onus on me as an International Road Federation India Chapter Chairman. And I'll tell you, we are working on this. We have taken a target to reduce this to 50% by 2030. The highest number of accidents which are happening on the highways in India has to be brought down to 50%. This is a target IRF has taken. And IRF India chapter is leading this for across the world and for the country. So we have been working very close with the government. It is basically the enforcement which is going to change. It is the engineering of the roads. It is the education, awareness of safety all across the, all the stakeholders. So we are working on five E's to see that we really bring out the See, the same person, if I go to London and drive, I drive with complete awareness of safety. I did 1000 kilometers of drive in London and I knew I was so conscious about my driving that I've never done in my life in India. Why was this? Because their roads are very good engineer. They are designed for the design speeds. There is an enforcement in place. If I do one mistake, I overtake or speed. I'm going to get challenged. I'm going to get fined. If I do it three times, my license is going to get canceled. So all this was in my mind when I was, and there were tools for me to navigate properly. There was a complete education with the entire, all other drivers. So, you know, this, this, all things we are now trying to educate, interact with all the stakeholders in the industry, right from manufacturing vehicles, to road authorities who are building roads, to traffic management, to police, to environment, everybody we are taking on the board. Our all stakeholders meetings we have, we have a complete professional setup to give training to all the stakeholders. This is how we are trying to bring in complete change. And 2030 is the target which we have taken to bring down this accident to 50%. All right. Thank you so much, sir. So we just got one more question. So it says that as a leading infrastructure company of India, how can you align with the goals of Atmanirbhar Bharat and India at 100 at, as the roadmaps announced in the latest annual budget of India? I understood your question up to Atmanirbhar. Then what was the next one? So as a leading infrastructure company of India, how can you align with the goals of Atmanirbhar Bharat as the roadmap announced in the latest annual budget of India? Right. right. So in Atmanirbhar, definitely whatever we are learning from abroad, we are trying to now produce in India. And this is continuously happening, right? From machineries to the products. Now, everything is making made in India and that is how we are. And we ourselves also have manufacturing units where we do entire precasting. Once the technology is brought, learnt, then it is adopted and produced in India. So not only my company, but I would say all the leading companies are working to see that we are completely self-reliant and we produce whatever is required in the country. And there's a continuous effort going on. And I'll tell you, we will now very, very soon be starting exports. So when we work for Maldives, when we work for Africa, when we are working for Guyana, when we are working for Bangladesh, we are trying to take materials from India to abroad. Because these are all Exim Bank funded projects where at least 50, 60% of your spend has to be from India. So that is how Atman River is getting completely into the sink with the industry. 
All right. Thank you so much, sir. So with that, we are done with the questions. So we, with this, we have come towards the end of this webinar. So I would really like to thank you, sir, on behalf of NOSPLAN organization for taking out your valuable time and interacting with all of us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.